real cases before a real judge. Plaintiff Shaniqua DeVos says she did not have an ideal childhood because her mother, the defendant, was doing crack cocaine and was involved in a violent relationship. Shaniqua, who is one of 11 children, was in and out of foster care and group homes, and she's suing her mother today for unpaid bills. Defendant Crystal Harris admits that she was heavily involved in crack cocaine and was often assaulted in front of her children. Crystal claims her children were only put into foster care after she was incarcerated for a crime she did not commit. And she believes her daughter is suing for more than she owes. Tell me what's going on. First of all, I would like to say I'm not here to down my mother or drag her name through the mud or anything. I love my mother dearly. She raised us to the best of her ability. But I am the fourth child of 11 kids. Um, I was not, I did not have the ideal childhood. Um, I dealt with domestic violence, drugs, mm -hmm. abuse, um, drugs such as marijuana and crack cocaine. Um, Who was on crack? My mother and some of my family mm -hmm. members. Um, things got so bad to where we had to actually relocate from where we was living to a different town. Um, things actually got worse. My mom was a, sing she was a single parent. Um, we was in and out of foster homes, in and out of different family members' households. Because she was still getting high? Yes. Um, things got a little crazy around 2006, which led my mother to be incarcerated for an assault charge. So we all got split up into different foster homes. I didn't want to comply with the foster home rules, so I'd be, I was considered as a runaway. They placed me into a group home, which um, I completed and got out when I was about 17, oh, got good. out on my own. What do you do now? Um, I'm in school right now for medical office assistant. Good. And, um, <laughs> I try not to let things that happened in my past define my future. So I kind of like try to let things go because tomorrow was not promised. Mm -hmm. And um, when my mom got out, she tried to start getting herself together, whatever. When did she get out? She got out about 2008. Um, Two years for an assault? A year and a half. Okay, she must have beat that person down real bad. <laughs> <laughs> let me allow her to speak some, ma'am. Why don't you tell me a little background here? First of all, Your Honor, if you don't mind, um, I've been watching your show for 14 seasons and I really enjoy your show. Incarcerated and I, I watch your show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Shaniqua, is, like she says, is 4 of 11. Um, I was married four days after I turned 19 years old. Um, then I made poor decisions. I was young and dumb. I did get involved heavily with um, crack cocaine, marijuana, and alcohol, um, and was also involved in a lot of violence. And How old were you when you started uh, using crack? Actually, my nose was broken, my eye cradle got cracked, and I was introduced to cocaine instead of being brought to the emergency room. What age? Uh, that was 21. Um, I was in an abusive relationship. It was heavily drugs and violence. And the kids became codependents. They started playing different roles. Um, one would get the kids ready. One would call the police. Um, one would hide the little ones. Um, it's nothing that I was proud of. And once they got, it started becoming an effect on them. I immediately took, took them out and put them, tried to get them into a state, a safe and stable environment, and I went. Because of what? The um, domestic violence. Okay. Uh, if there were no domestic violence, everything would have been fine? No, there was drugs, heavily drugs Let's and gang-related relationships. Let's not forget that part. Most definitely. Because, hold on because I don't want you to shift everything on to the domestic violence situation because any parent will not give up their seven or 11 children or what have you into foster care because a man is abusing them. They will send him to jail first. So, 
they, they, let's tell it like it is, man. I mean, it was your crack addiction that caused your children to be removed, not just some guy fighting. Yeah, if y'all on crack, you're going to fight. You're going to steal from each other. You're going to hide crack from each other. That was probably why half of the fighting was. You go pick up some dope. You stash a little piece for yourself. Time he ready to sleep it off. You getting up, going into the bathroom, opening up the window in the bathroom, putting your little rock in there, smoking it, walking back out like ain't nothing ever happened, knowing that a crackhead can smell crack in his sleep. <laughs> to tell me now, you, you know I wasn't going to just let you go with that. You all fighting over crack half the time. So it's the You're crack. You're absolutely correct, all right. Your Honor. Um, but now, my, most women get hooked on drugs following some no good man. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, you may have followed him, and that doesn't sound reasonable. I know you were smarter than that at 21. The reason you got hooked on cocaine is when your nose was broken. Instead of going to the hospital, somebody said, here. And you snorted it? Yes, sir. With a broken nose? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, what sir. else you want me to I'd like know? to reiterate, and my children got placed in foster care when I was incarcerated for a crime that I didn't commit. I went into recovery immediately. I don't know what Shanique was dates. Sometimes she seemed to get dates wrong. How long have you been in recovery? I've been in recovery since 98. Okay, good. So, her dates, her dates tend to be Mm -hmm. Her dates tend to be wrong because, like I said, I coming out of that relationship, trying to get myself back together and with seven children, mm -hmm. I didn't do the best of parenting. I didn't discipline them. Shaniqua had 127 days of school. That was a the reason they got, I got educational neglect because Shaniqua skipped 127 days of school and I'm really proud. I'm not trying to down her because that was her past. And like she said, it can't define her future because Shanique was doing excellent now. All right. Let me hear about the unpaid bills you're showing your mother for. Okay, well, my mother got released from jail. She got herself together and found herself an apartment and everything else. Yeah. Um, she had no credits, and she needed, like, a phone and cable, and I offered to help her with those things. Okay. Um, with the knowledge that she was going to pay the bills. How did you help? Um, I had got the phone in my name, and I had got cable in my name for her address. Okay, and what happened? Obviously she didn't pay it. Obviously she didn't pay it because come, I think about May, I had got a bill from the credit department, DirecTV's credit department, saying that the bill was outstanding. So how much was it? Let me see what you have there. And this is both the phone. This is the phone. This and is the, the cable TV, bill. And One is six hundred dollars and one is four hundred and sixty-four dollars. Ma'am, what do you say to this? She says she placed um, these bills in your name and you failed to pay them. Uh, well, the cable bill, I didn't realize it was six hundred. You say? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was that. The last I known, it should have been about two hundred or around. Based 200. on what? I don't know. My last bill. What month? Um. November, December, and right. it was pretty high. So but this is five months later. That's other siblings um, ordered movies. Other people were responsible for that bill. I don't order movies. Um, not the movies that was ordered anyways when I finally. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of movies do you order? <laughs> yeah, those were not my movies, though. <laughs> Go ahead. And, like with the, with the phone bill, I was keeping Shaniqua's son. Um, and? She came to the, she wanted to know her child not to be in the house without me a phone. She came and said, let's get a phone. You need to get a phone. And she said, I'll help you keep the bill up. Um, I know you can't afford it right now, because I couldn't. And she said, I'll help you keep the bill up. When it got cut off, I, What was that help to be, your understanding? How much I, help do you believe she was I, going to give you? I, I don't know. Pay, pay the bill. I don't, I don't know. Pay the whole bill. Yeah. Her. That's not help. That's the, I'll pay the bill. 
That's not saying I'll help pay the bill. Well, That's saying I will pay the bill. She says she'll help me with a phone. All and right. she didn't say whether it was a bill. She's correct. She didn't say rather paying the bill. She said she'll help me with a phone. Did she give you anything on the phone? No. All right. Well, we're going to take a dollar off, make sure she keeps her word. <laughs> Ma'am, I'll grant you your judgment. Her only defense today is that one, with the cable bill, last she knew it was $200 and that was in November. Mm -hmm. And the other defense was other people in the household watch uh, movies mm -hmm. and she doesn't watch those type of movies. All she watches is dirty movies and so <laughs> they couldn't have been hers or whatever. I think that's what she said. And then on the phone bill, she said that you agreed to help. So I'm gonna take that into consideration and knock a dollar off. Your judgment is $1,092 as you have requested. I'm not knocking a dollar off. I changed my mind. Just like you changed, <laughs> like you changed your mind. Have a good day. Judgment. Um, no hard feelings, and I love you. I love you too. <laughs>